ahead. You're gonna task them anyway. Go ahead. Tell them what you want to tell them. How's everyone doing? <laughs> Oh, oh what a crazy gentlemen. day this has been so far, just to get to this 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 point at 7 o'clock. So we're glad you're here with us today, and we got a pretty good show, I think. Yeah, it's going to be all right. It's going to be gonna all be right. It's going to be a good show. Yeah, it's going to be a good show. Yeah, absolutely. Already starting getting to get some love out there. I can see it from this far away. Get some breaths. Get some <clears throat> diaphragm breaths. And oh, yeah. Wow, diaphragm breaths. That's a little scary. <laughs> Calm down. <laughs> all right, you ready to rock and roll with this ready thing? Ready to go. I'm Scott. I'm done. And we're, we're talking, talking real estate. All right, so the first thing I have to shoot here, everybody's imitating that I'm Scott, I'm down, we're talking real estate. So you can too. Send us video clips of you saying, I'm so and so, and I'm so and so, and we're talking whatever you want. The people in our office do it now. Uh, a buddy of mine, he and his wife called me and said it, so it's getting love all over the place. Some goofy thing that Don and I made up. I know. So I know. it ain't that great, but if you want to, send us ridiculous clips of your so and so, your so and so, whatever you're doing, okay? Yeah. And That's say whatever one. you're doing, yeah. The second thing on the order of agenda of things to talk about today, the big question for the show is Did your power go out recently? There was power down, there was power outages all yeah. over the place, in weird places. Like, yeah. there was some nearby, there was some for the, like, yeah. there was no rhyme or reason no, to it. No, right, exactly. What the heck was that yeah. all about? So I was going to a Sunday, I was driving my son to meet his mom halfway in Ohio, and I didn't get to see that storm, but it caused power outages all over the place. So question is, did you lose power? Did you lose power? So put a little post in there, how many days you want to put in there, whatever you want, put everything you want in there. So how many days did you lose power, all right? So that's the question for the show, and you'll hear that repeatedly throughout. Now, Don, give us a rundown. What's going on today? All right, so we got our question of the day, our market update. Yep. We got some, you got some good information about Absolutely. that? Absolutely. The market is crazy. Our topic on the question that we asked you, what did, what do you do when the power goes out? What yep. to do? Yep. So, folks, we took some time and kind of dug into that a little bit. Hopefully, we give you a couple of nuggets that you can use. Yep. City Spotlight, Rochester Hills. Rochester Hills. You know who lives there? I, well, I got some... I got famous some people. people. Oh yeah, see, I don't have famous people. Oh, okay. I have the Jen Drew Six. I sold them a house in Rochester Hills. Well, kind uh, of my buddy Dave Drew Lard, he's got a house in Rochester. Rochester Hills is, a, is map territory for me, buddy. And it's a big, big city. Yep, absolutely. Big city. Absolutely. Um, interview with Mark Light, home warranty expert. So I'm super excited about that. Mark's been yeah. in the industry about 35 years, and he's got a ton of great stuff to tell you. We talk about home warranties a lot as far as protecting yourself with them. He's going to tell you all kinds of stuff, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Yeah. Yep. And there's some stuff that we didn't even know. And yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, which is pretty cool. And, of course, fan of the show, story from the road. Yeah, absolutely. Stories from the road. You got yeah. it. Bring it all home at the end. Yeah, it's going to be an awesome show. So, stay tuned for the whole half hour. You're going to love it. We're going to say ridiculous things, too. I will. Don will try to straighten me out, but you know how that goes. Yeah. Do the best I can. So let's start with easy stuff, Dad. Where the heck are you tuning in from? Are you tuning in from Wonderful Woodhaven, Fashionable Ferndale? Where are you coming at us from? I saw some people at Southgate the other day. Rochester Hills. Where are you Hills? coming at? Rochester Hills in the house. Where are you at? Anybody in Carrollton? Yeah, I'm telling you. So as you can see, the iPad is dead, so I won't be giving any big shout-outs today. I will do the best we can to make it ridiculous and funny, though, anyway. All right? That's all we can do. So, Dad, let's talk do. market. You want to hear market update? You want to hear what's going on in the market? I do, yeah. So you know, what's what you, important what's, to them? What are you seeing? What's important to the people, one of the most important things, is rates. Interest rates, man. Some big news this week, eh? Yeah, so you want to hear about good stuff? Yeah, absolutely. So I was talking to our buddy Mike McLaughlin from Academy Mortgage on the ride in today, okay? Here's what he told me. He said he locked somebody in for a 30-year at 275. Under 3%. It's insane. It yeah. blows my mind. I remember seeing it. I saw something this week about... Interest rates under 3% the first time, and I don't even know how many years, I can't remember, yep. 30, 40 years, some crazy number that. So um, 2.75, think about yeah. it. And I go, I go, is that 15 years? No, 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 it's 30 years. Yeah. They're paying a little bit of points, less yeah. than a point, okay? Yeah. So you're paying a little bit of upfront cost, but 275, that's absurd. It's like free money. Yeah, it's absurd. They're throwing money at it. Now them. here's what it's doing to the market, okay? It's slowing transactions, transactions down. Uh, and how? Well, so underwriting is not like a thing where it used to be. I used to have a rule that underwriting would be like three, four days, right? Now it's freaking. I was calling, I called my clients yesterday on Tuesday and saying, look, man, we just got to keep waiting. Right. Like the hard parts are the private inspection appraisal, yeah? Right, yeah. Once you're done underwriting, it's just, but it's now it's bogging down. It's a little the underwriting slow. part that's taking the time. I have a transaction that's going on, and the it's been in underwriting since last week, and I was talking to the mortgage or the, uh, the, the uh, processor, and she said that. The, the, the underwriters are working from home, they're understaffed, they're overworked, and they're working on weekends. Yeah. Weekends, which is pretty much unheard of in that business. So yeah. let's sum it up it's this crazy. way. It's the rate stuff, let's sum it up this way. Great rates, if you're thinking about buying a home, 
uh, or if you're thinking about refining, refining great, great time to yeah. do that. Just be patient. Yeah. Just be patient because it's going to take a little bit. And it's so, going to be well worth the wait. That's yeah, for sure, right? Eh? Absolutely. Yeah. So let's talk about houses, homes, right? Yeah. So what are you seeing? Uh, I'm seeing the same thing. Things are selling pretty quickly. Um, this is what I'm Sunday night, 5 o'clock, sold last night. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's yeah, definitely, it's, it's, going it's still seller's market, out. yeah? Yeah. It if is. it's in good shape. Yeah. If it's not in good shape, people are passing it by, or yeah. I, I'm telling buyers now, I'm going, look, man, if something's been 14 days or a month, then you can start talking about, I'm going to take the, this off the price or whatever. Right. Right? So right. It, it, it depends on the home, but definitely still a seller's market. So that's kind of our market update for this week. Yeah. 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 Guys, we, we never thought rates would just keep dropping like this, and they just keep doing yeah. it. With how strong it's it's crazy with how strong the well on the seller side and buyers that are that are out there buying and the interest rates are going down. Why? What? Did, I, did I, have no idea. I have it no interesting? idea. It's it so is. Interesting it's with, different. Yeah, yeah, with yeah. the way things are going on, supposedly everybody's talking about the economy and the housing market is cranking. So yeah. I think we're single handedly making things happen. Yeah, and, and I, that's one of the reasons why I think we ended up getting going back to work earlier than most in the state of Michigan. Is because it drives a lot the economic engine in, in the state absolutely. of absolutely so, are you kidding yeah. me so think about this stuff think about how many people get involved in a real estate transaction yeah a couple dozen yeah that's all kinds yeah. of people working and it's you know each what I mean? one transaction and we right. get mark light we get mike mcglog we get you and i we get right. the title people title we get all these other people involved right. in what's going on processors yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Yep. absolutely yep. absolutely so all right so let's ask that question again did you lose power during the great uh, power outage of this past week and if so, how long was it out? Yeah, I'm exactly. curious. Some people are talking about two days. Some people are saying one day, yeah. things like that. And we're going to cover in our topic in a minute here how what you do when the power goes out. Because we always want to be relevant to you. We always want to talk about things, real estate or house related, that are going to help you. Yeah. And hopefully current. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So, so you can always tune in for current information. Absolutely. So, so, all right, so let's talk about what do you do when your power goes out? And again, folks, we're not being sarcastic or tongue in cheek. These are things we're, we're going to take you through some steps and things. A couple of different pieces of uh, nuggets of information are going to be helpful to you that you might not know. Some stuff's going to be commonsensical, but there's some things you might not know, right? So let's start with number one, first thing, check with your neighbors, right? If your power goes out and you walk outside and somebody else's the rest of the lights are on, you know, at night or something like that, it's not a power outage, it's just your, your house. Something's going on at your house. Right, absolutely, at your house. So <laughs> you're check it out, right? So the first thing you do is go out and check with neighbors. Because then you guys can bitch with each other about, oh, about the power went out again. I, I do that every time the power goes out. Yeah. I go bitch at my neighbor. I'm like, well, I can't believe this. You know what I mean? I always do that. When I first moved into my house, our power would go out. It seemed like when the wind would blow, the our power would go out on our, on our side of the street, on our neighbor's side of the street, right across the street at nighttime. I could see their how their lights are on. And work on our side, it's off, and it's it's a very frustrating feel. It's, it's like a rocket. Yeah. It's like what the hell's wrong? Those people have the lights over yeah. there. Let's, let's go break it. Let's live in their yeah. houses. Yeah. So we had yeah. to, we had to transform in our backyard. They replaced it, and we there's had really issues. So there's really no rhyme or reason to why no. it goes out, right? Yeah. There's no rhyme or reason. Yeah. So tell us in the comments, post what happened to you and your power outage. But the, number one, like I said, check in with the neighbors. Okay. Number two, this is a frustrating one, but I'm going to say it anyway. Call the power company. Call DT now. I picked up this interesting little tidbit of information. If you call them with the 1-800-477-4747, I got that memorized. If you call them, then typically it's 38 minutes you're on hold to get to somebody, okay? Now, if you do their chat, which is dte.com, chat with DTE, with backslashes around it. If you do their chat thing, they answer you in 16 minutes. So folks, if you're more tech savvy, try that. Try that, use that. Do, Go, go to the chat with DTE, the both the backslash on both sides. Yeah. Okay. You also, there's also the option of having the app on your having an app on your smartphone, and you can post something in there, or you can click that you're having a power problem in your area. Does and it have a chat function in there? You think? I don't know if it has a chat function in there, but I know it'll show it'll show what's going on in your region or in your area, and you can drill down, I think, into that and find out possibly how many. I think. You can see how many houses might be out in that area, specific area. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So, so the app's really are good from what I've talked when I've talked to other people about. So, so, so far, you got check with neighbors and and call a power company. T. Uh, third, this is one Don and I kind of discussed back and forth. Reach out to family and friends and tell them why you came up with that one. Right. Well, they might be able to help you out. You can go over to their house. You can. They might have something to a generator maybe yeah they can if they have a generator they don't need it you can possibly use it if you need it so I, we're gonna I talk more about that it amazes me how many people have generators it amazes I me have like, one. I know but I mean like it amazes like people I'm just going 
Wow, they got a gym. Like you can hear it and stuff. That's yeah. crazy. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. So number three, reach out to family and friends either for a place to stay, especially if it's cold, right? If or hot. Or hot. Or way hot, hot, right? Because yeah. that's the thing. The temperature fluctuations what really pisses people off, yeah. right? Bothers them, yeah. you know? So, or if they have a generator or something you can use, all right? You need to store food. Yeah. So, so we'll talk, let's talk about, about preserved too. food. Yeah, Tell me about, so a fridge, all the information that I dug through and, and gleaned over said, leave the fridge shut, leave it plugged in. Yeah. And if you do that, if you leave the refrigerator, the food will stay cold for four hours. Four hours, okay. Also, so if it's if it's a short term outage, that might be okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, they say put a, a thermometer in there so you know the temperature. And if it goes over forty degrees for longer than two hours, you're gonna probably have to get rid of some food. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Now if it's a freezer though, it's different. Yeah. Forty eight hours in a freezer. How no kidding? So if you had a freezer. Get your food in the freezer, it'd be okay for two days? For two days. I think wow. if you, as long as you don't open it up, especially continuously, and the meat will stay frozen and it'll keep that whole compartment cold. So what if you're really hot? Can you jump in your freezer? I guess you could. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 48 like hours. Deer head. Throw yourself in there with the deer head, will ya? 48 hours goes out the window. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and we learned from John Davis, the firefighter, last time he was here, number five, which is unplug all the rest of your appliances because power surge might cause you problems. Right. Especially an electric stove. Right, yeah, yeah, because you, you want to put your hand on some stove. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. So right. our, our food's cold. Or, you're, or you're, not, you're not in the house and, pot, and the stove goes back on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So tell me about, you were mentioning something about when we were talking about a how, whole house surge protector? Surge protector, I have this on So how does house. that work? So it, it interrupts the, the, the power, if a power surge comes through the electric line into your home, this surge protector and it's on your circuit breaker box, yep. stop, prevents the surge from going into the rest of the outlets and into your, your appliances, your TV, and those sort of computer. Um, so, and I've had it for a number, of, probably 10 years or so now, and it's never had any issues. And, so and you have so, a whole house surge detector as possible. Yeah. I just unplug everything except for the fridge, that's what I would do. Yeah, so, but, but it, of course you do the stove you want, if it's electric stove you want to unplug it, but, um, I would check into it. It's it's well worth the money. It's not like having a it's it's a big it's like a big um, uh, surge protector strip for the whole house. Yeah. Um, so, anyways. Okay. So number six, don't be glued to your home. Right. It's beautiful summertime. Uh, go on vacation for the weekend or something like that. Or if you if you got the ability. Yeah, right? that's it. Or go. You know, that's that's a good point. Go to go to a hotel. So I can remember I can remember a vacation when I was a kid. Uh, my mom, myself, and my sister, we uh, we were gonna go up north, right? And a tornado was coming here, right? So we went up north, and the power was out here for like two days and stuff. So we totally we were up here, you know, up at yeah. the top, and we had nothing to do with that stuff. Yeah. So Didn't it was it, it. it was an up north trip to Mackinac. My mom, I, my sister, and I took. We were little kids, yeah. and we blew, tornado bothered all down here, and power out is nothing for us, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, so think about that if you're able to. You know, don't be glued to your house. Go somewhere else, whether it be you know family, friends, or go on take a little trip or something. Or even hotel wouldn't even be that bad. Yeah, Reverend Finn across the street, or what's it, sixty bucks, eighty yeah. bucks? Even if you have to go out of the area a little bit, it's it's, it's kind of like a day, a night away, maybe. Possibly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. yeah. so, and the last one is what about a generator, Don? I'm tough. I I saw I was showing a house just now today, like the third house I saw today had a generator. You have a generator. Tell me about generators. Well, you, so you have two types. There's a portable one that you pull out of your garage with gas, gasoline powered. You start it off, plug a couple things into it. Um, and then you have a whole house generator, which is probably it's going to cost you five to $7,000 for that, that. And it's hooked up to your natural gas line. Okay. Maybe, maybe even propane. I don't know much about that. But um, when the power automatically goes off, it's connected to your circuit breaker box. And when power goes off, it gets noticed that the power's off. It's gonna fire right up and it's gonna it's gonna power whatever you have connected to that. So bang. Very, huh? Yeah, right. It's very instant. And as a matter of fact, if I'm not mistaken, um, some of them have to go on every two weeks or every Saturday, every you know, seven every seven or fourteen days to make sure it's working properly. Yeah. So there's a little it's on for 10, 15 minutes. Again, so there's a little upkeep for it. Yeah, there's a little upkeep, but it goes on. And just to make sure it's working. And, and you want it to work when you need it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? So, yeah. so okay. So but it's more expensive. So it's one of those things that, you know, people with health issues, um, those sort of things may want to consider something like that. For peace it's of expensive. mind, right? Peace of yeah, mind. For peace of mind. Yeah. Right. So, I mean, those are the things you, you do when a power outage happens. Um, and, again, some of you may not have thought of, like, the time frame, the difference between chat and... 
phone call, what the generator costs. Not everybody don't run to Home Depot. If you do, tell us what kind you bought, what kind of what's what's on sale. If we get to that point, mm -hmm. yeah. Do you so, have a generator? I do not. I do. I, I bought one a few years ago, and I think we had two outages within a couple weeks, and it was just I was tired of it. And I got it Harbor Freight. I think it was about five hundred bucks, four or five hundred bucks. It's gas power. Gas power. Yeah. 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 It's yeah. it's. I remember. You remember about. 10 or 15 years ago, they had the big power yeah, outage. The Rose region, power, yeah, like yeah, whole area. States, yeah, yeah. yeah. I remember coming home, my neighbor had a power outage. Yeah, you know, those things yeah. running real hard all night long. Yeah. And they're loud as hell. Yeah. They're loud as hell. Yeah. Yeah. But he was like, and I think there's some things you can't run when the generator's on, I think. A couple things maybe you could, like maybe AC you can't run. Well, it depends on if you have a, how you have a setup. Yeah, that might be a little bit tougher, but. Um, you can only have a couple things on. For example, like your refrigerator, do that every couple hours or a few hours for the day. Um, you know, your like electronics, you got you need a phone. Yeah. Your landlines not may not work, so you need your cell phone to charge that up. You need your plug Yeah, you know, so there's definitely phone. some need there. There's definitely some need there. All right, so those are the things we thought about when uh, we thought I, it was very apropos to talk about what you do when there's a power outage. It's timely. Absolutely, because lots and lots of folks were out of, I mean, I bet you, Half my Facebook was out of power. Yeah. Yeah, that's not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so loud. our question again to you is, and put in the comments if you would please, did your power go out recently and how long did it go out for? Because we would love to know. So in the comments, yes, my power went out for five days, two days, one day, half an hour. So we'll see. We'll go from there. Don, let's talk city spotlight. All right. Rochester Hills, Michigan. Rochester Hills, Michigan. It's a big, big city. It's about 32 square miles. Do really? You know? It's that big. It's large. 32 and, square miles? Oh, my God. And within Rochester Hills is a section called Rochester. Yep. So, but we're not going to talk about Rochester. So Rochester is in Rochester Hills? Rochester is in Rochester Hills. So yeah. why is it Dearborn Heights inside of Dearborn, buddy? Good question. All right. So anyway, that. Rochester Hills is bigger than Rochester, just so, so you know. Rochester Hills is about 12 miles north of Detroit. There's about 70,000 people in that city. That's a big city. Yeah, well, that's pretty big. It's more bigger than I thought it was. Yeah. So um, currently on the market in Rochester Hills, yeah. 175 homes. Really? That's a lot. Oh, my God. That's a lot of homes. It's yeah, a big yeah, city. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the range, price ranges, I thought this was interesting, from 113000 to $2.5 So is 113000 right next to the $2.5 million? No. There's <laughs> a lot <laughs> in between. Probably there's, not. There's a lot of two, three, four, five hundred thousand dollars homes in that area. Do they call it the Hills? I don't know. It's I know the Hills. You go to Rochester down there. I know yeah. the Hills. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just being ridiculous. I apologize. And pending, currently sold under contract, 172 So there's... More active than pending? By three, yeah. Okay. Yep. And in the last 30 days, I think this is probably our lar largest number we've ever had, was 104 sold in the last 30 days. Okay. Ranging from 95,000 to 720,000. So what's interesting to me about Rochester Hills, the amount of actives to pendings and solds. Yeah. That's really, usually folks, the pendings are your key to how cranked up the market is. If that number is the highest, that's usually where you want to be at. But the actives are still higher. So people are starting to get the feel for yeah. seller's market. Let's put it on the market, man. Yeah. And so inventory in Rochester Hills is happening. If you want to see Rochester Hills, call down to myself. We'll take you out there. We'll take you to the hills. We'll take you to Rochester. We'll take you everywhere you want. Wherever you want to go. <laughs> so, hey, so I got some famous people from Rochester Hills. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You ever hear of Jason Veritek? Well, you know what? I want to hear something interesting. His uncle... He used to own Veritex Auto right over here on oh Michigan my gosh, Really? He used to be my mechanic. No kidding. Yeah, he used to bowl with my uncle, Mr. Veritech. Yeah. Uh, Dan, Dan, Ver Dan Veritech? Dan Veritech. He used to have a shop right here in Michigan and Inkster. Yeah. And I think he had to burn down, I think. But that's, that's his uncle. Yeah. Oh, Jason no Veritech. Yeah, yeah. No Boston's from Boston Red Sox. Yep. Um, the Kozlowski family, the race car drivers. Okay. You've heard of them, NASCAR. Yep. No, I don't do NASCAR, sorry. Well, but the, <laughs> I'm sure you've heard of them. I don't do NASCAR. And, and, and Jacob Truba, NHL player, I think we'll, is it Quebec? Quebec, Quebec, somewhere in Canada. Something French. Something, French. Something French. I think so. Something French Canadian. And your favorite singer? Madonna? Madonna. Why, is yeah. that because I'm a virgin? Is that what it is? I am. Like a virgin. <laughs> hey. Uh, hey right. Please. Yeah, enough of that. Enough of that. <laughs> so you can't take me too far no, off topic. Because no, you are it's it crazy, Doc. Holy moly. I have my mistakes. All right, so listen. Sorry, let's please. get to the real deal here. Yeah. And folks, I want to preface this this way. The gentleman, again, that we're bringing in to interview is Mark Light. He... Um, has 35 years of experience in the warranty industry. So he's going to answer the tough questions. Not like the, what do you do? Do you call in? What do you do? All that kind of fluff. We're not going to do that. He's going to answer the questions like, 
What do you do to, make, to try to make sure you don't get denied a claim? You know, all kinds of interesting things that you want to know about home warranties. So, and we talk about them a lot because they're a nice peace of mind, yeah? Absolutely. All right, so let's bring in Mark Light. Let's bring in Mark Light. Give a round of Clap motions Thank in for you. Hey, Thank hey, you. Hey, hey, hey. Mark Light. Now, Thanks, there was a Mark. big controversy of should we handshake, should we fist bump, should we elbow, what do we do? We're not going to do that. We're just going to let him tell the truth. He's going to speak truth <laughs> here today. All right? Hello. Thanks, Mark. Thanks for being here. Absolutely. We're so glad that you're here. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So his dad used to be in the home warranty business and taught you the the ropes, right? Yeah, my dad actually got in the home warranty business by accident because um, he sold um, franchises for C21. And when he went out to California, he noticed this new industry called home home warranties. And uh, he took that concept and started a little company called Go Crest Home Warranty. Uh, back in 1979. Oh, in fact, wow. the first slogan, and you guys talked about when you, and your thing was, peace of mind. Home warranty provides peace of mind and financial protection. Yeah. Mark, you want to hear something funny? I was four years old when that happened. <laughs> I was four in 1979. <laughs> all right? So I was four years old when his dad was making all kinds of money selling home warranties and giving people protection. How about that? You're younger than me. Yeah, see, there you go. All right, let's get into the, the nuts and bolts of this thing. Let's talk about what is a home warranty, Mark? A home warranty is a limited service contract that is still primarily through a real estate transaction. Uh, it can provide coverage for the seller. For the seller in a normal real estate market, it's a, it's a marketing tool with some protection for the seller in most cases. And then for the buyer, it's financial protection. It provides most, mostly one year um, coverage on the major mechanical systems within the home, uh, not outside the home, but within the home uh, for one full year after closing. Uh, so it's a that's a service contract like similar you buy on your TV at Best Buy or whatever, but we cover for a lot less money the entire house, like the furnace, the central air, all your appliances and plumbing, uh, hot water tanks are a big thing, and uh, et cetera. Okay, okay. So what else you have for me? All right, so what is the benefit of a home warranty for a seller? In a normal market, uh, or, or yeah, a seller will find a home warranty be, to be a great marketing tool to help sell the house quicker and perhaps for more money. Uh, it also provides them with some protection for the home home inspection, which is true today, even in this market. It can protect them for, uh, for the home inspection coming up in case something unknown comes up, like a, maybe a cracked heat exchanger uh, in a furnace. Uh, but uh, it, you know, in the... Um, it helps, you know, it's, it provides a, it's a great marketing tool, price peace of mind, as I said before. Um, repeat that question, make, make sure I didn't forget anything. I think you covered the seller stuff. Let's talk about for the, what kind of benefits for the, for the buyer. Let's talk about that for the buyer. The buyer, yeah. the financial protection, peace of mind, as we said here earlier. The likelihood as a buyer that you will have a system mechanical breakdown in that home that first year is about 40, 45%. So there's no other more important post-closing service you can make sure you have through your real estate agent than a home warranty because most likely you're going to need it. Yeah. Right. And Mark, I, I, I always, for especially for first-time home buyers, I always throw that extra, hey, you have some old crap money sitting on the side. Home, a home warranty is similar in that respect. Oh, that you're going to protect us like crazy. Well, and yeah. After you get in that home and you're getting used to that new mortgage payment and property taxes, and you know, first couple of years you're kind of living paycheck to paycheck and you don't always plan we always try to save but we don't always plan for that emergency when the air conditioning goes out which is quite is today a quite expensive proposition yeah. and by you or realtor making sure you get a home warranty is providing you financial they're, they're helping you um, pr- provide you financial protection yeah that's awesome good good answers so what's the difference between a homeowner's warranty and homeowner's insurance Perfect question. Best question. Um, people get that mixed up. Homeowner's insurance is not the same as a home warranty. Homeowner's insurance, which are all we need to have and require to have, you have a mortgage, uh, is it covers for acts of God. It covers if the house catches on fire, covers for that tornado, yep. that storm, that electrical strike or lightning strike. That's something homeowners cover. They do not cover if your furnace goes out or your central air doesn't turn on tomorrow morning, or your hot water tank tank starts leaking. That's considered normal wear and tear and maintenance. Therefore, those are items not covered. A home warranty is like fills in the gap. It basically covers those items, uh, major systems in your house that are excluded on your homeowner's policy. 
Yeah, sounds okay. good. Sounds good. good. So let's talk pricing. So I, I think just a basic, my basic knowledge of it, there's range of pricing, yeah? And it varies anywhere from, as it's gone up a little bit over the years, but um, some have, some got more than others. I'm going to say a good range now is probably from maybe 450 and that's the low side for a single family home under 5,000 square feet. Keep in mind, anything over 5,000 square feet, uh, all these home warranty companies do um, charge you a surcharge. Um, but that's, yeah. And it could be as high as, be quite frank with you, as much as $1,000. Yeah. So, What's a mid-grade? What's up like a mid-grade? 600 bucks? Our standard coverage is four ninety nine. Our top of the line is five ninety nine. So we're kind of like oh, okay. in the middle. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's pretty so cool. you have two pay policy. Right. And then there's a break for condos too. Okay. What in what, what how how's, how does that work? What kind of medium? Yeah. What what yeah yeah. Uh, it's a kind of if it's, a, if it's a condo, kind of a lesser risk, I guess, because they have associations in a lot of cases. But they get a twenty dollar price break. So so instead of being four ninety nine. It could be, um, it's um, with us, it's twenty dollars less. It okay. varies company to company. Okay. It's all yeah, different. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. all different. I didn't know that. I didn't know so, there was a difference on condos. We were kind of talking off off camera in that a little bit. And you were telling us about the big deal with refrigerants, right? So the, tell us about the changes and tell us how that how that affects home warranty. This is the big uh, bugaboo in the home warranty industry nationwide, and it's been something the industry's been dealing with for the past at least ten years. Uh, based on certain treaties passed back in the late 80s, early 90s, uh, various refrigerants have been phased out. Now we're to the point where we're phasing out uh, Freon. Uh, most of your 10 sear air conditioning units, which is the majority of air conditioning out in this area throughout southeast Michigan, are pretty much working on a uh, Freon, okay? Uh, Freon has been, production of Freon has been stopped for a while. But some contractors, the savvy ones, uh, stockpile Freon, and so it's available here and there. But I am projecting after this season, especially this has been a record year for AC claims, as you can imagine. Yeah, sure. uh, industry wide. As hell, that's why. Yeah, industry wide. I can't have sweat right now. Well, I have. I have learned here people can lose their heat in the dead of winter and uh, and deal with the maybe the lack of heat for a few days before that new furnace comes in, but. You lose your you lose your air for a couple hours in ninety degree heat. All hell breaks. Oh, absolutely! I'm telling you what. So let me tell you quick. So for that's me, been my, that's been my life this past month. Listen, solving problems. Sixty five degrees in my house all the time. Yeah. Like, you can walk in there all summer long. It will be sixty five. You must have an old old central air unit. Oh, I'm new one. I wouldn't let your electric bill. Uh, oh, listen, it's sixty five. I leave all the lights off most of the time anyway. But sixty five degrees all the damn yeah. time. Oh, I hate being hot. Let me um, elaborate more on that question because it's important. Um, in some states, I do continually add just on the subject matter. But um, an older unit, anything old, younger, older after 1990, under 1994, let's say, is going to um, probably rely on Freon primarily. When Freon is gone and it's not available, that older unit is obsolete and you're going to need a whole new unit. Right now, some older units can be recharged if Freon is available. Uh, most of these contractors that do have it, uh, they're charging $80, $90 a pound. You might need six, seven, eight pounds. Um, so it can be very pricey. Then again, recharging a unit is still cheaper than replacing it, uh, with, you know, given that fact. Uh, some home warranties will have a limit per pound for any type of refrigerant. This is where it gets tricky. Right here. $10 per pound is pretty common. Uh, that's all they're going to pay if, there, if, there, if there's a, use, a need for Freon. That sounds okay, but if your client needs, or you, the homeowner out there needs six, seven pounds, on average, your out-of-pocket expense, this is even when you have a home warranty and everything's going well, it's gonna be about 600 and some dollars out of pocket on average. Wow. So there are home warranties out there, I'm, I proudly represent one that does not have a limit at all for any type of refrigerant. And we also cover for sear matching and um, uh, things of that I item. But uh, it's, a, it's an important thing to be aware of as a consumer. If you are looking at a property where the AC is older, keep in mind, that if it needs Freon, there, there'll be a good chance in the near future that you won't be able to recharge it, and you may need to re think about replacing that unit, or at least consider a, uh, a home warranty that could cover you properly. Yeah. Okay. Can you can you explain more about just you know briefly the sear? What you mean by sear and 
Okay, most of the units in the community out here are probably 10 or below season, seasonal energy efficiency ratings, what they call. Uh, if you're 13 seer or above, you're, 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 you're good to go in that you're using the newer, newer refrigerants, like Piron's a brand name for some of these refrigerants, and that's readily available. It's pricey when you need it, but it's still a little bit lower than Freon if you can find it. But 13 seer and above, and, and a lot of the units are putting in now are 16, so, but you know, 13 seer and above. 10 is way, 10 is way 10, low. If you've got 10 seer, you're gonna need that home warranty probably. But 13 seer is the more modern, newer refrigerants oh. out there. Gotcha, okay. And by the way, they're not making anything less than 13 seer now. out there going right forward. Now. Okay, yeah. wow. See, so if you have less than 13, you know, you're, you're outdated. Right. Okay, okay. okay. good information there. Why didn't you even think of that? So. All right, how do, you, how do you reduce your chances of being denied a service request? Because right, this is one we get a lot of the questions like, what, what, do you, like, what do you do to, to make it so it's less chance to be denied? Yeah, every home warranty company comes and tells you there will be no denials. Oh, yeah. Look twice, by the way. Well, is that what insurance companies are supposed to do? Deny first? Some, no. yeah. <laughs> yeah, no. yeah, no. Some kidding. companies, some deny, companies deny, are better. Deny. A lot of it has to do with the local rep, too. But anyways, yeah. um, uh, the best way to avoid a, when you're, avoid a denial if you're getting a house with a home warranty is first of all start coverage at the listing uh, home warranty companies look at previous coverage most of the home warranties and provide some sense of listing coverage for a price some do it complimentary uh, we do it for complimentary but start that property as a as the agent, you should start the property early on with warranty coverage. It's free, it doesn't really cost you anything at that time. So, and the reason that's important, that one fact, is that if something happens right after closing, you know, of course that will raise some red flags if this was pre-existing or not, or not in good working order at contract dates, which is a, you know, a quote from these contracts. Um, they're gonna look and see how long it's been covered. If there's listing coverage, a history back there, uh, that will serve you very well, okay? Uh, also, to, if you are uh, a buyer uh, and you're looking at a property and there is no uh, warranty on that property because it is a seller's market, you can have your realtor order the warranties with certain home warranty companies where that listing from the time they accept your offer until it goes to closing uh, is covered, even though it's a co-op deal. So oh, I, I, in a lot of my training I do now, that's how I train now is that as soon as you get that offer, even though it doesn't have a home warranty, put that warranty in the system as seller coverage to start out and then we'll convert it as we approach closing to the buyer's name. That way, we, if there's any gray areas that come up, that gives me the ammunition I need to go to work for you uh, um, or for the industry. Um, other thing I wanna bring out, Making a claim the day after closing is not always a good idea. I mean, it's common sense. The later in the contract you make a claim, the better off the situ situation will be in the handling of that claim. Uh, some home warranty state uh, undetectable pre-existing is a covered thing. Don't be misled by that too much because uh, a lot of times they'll have their contractors take a picture and they'll take the, the picture will go back to the claims department and say, well, that picture shows me that that was visible or it was detectable. So uh, don't put too much, you know, brain, you know, confidence in that that type of verbiage. Yeah, yeah. So, All right, so okay, okay. let's talk about that last. We always like to hear stories in the real, real world stuff. So tell us. We mentioned it already a little bit, but it was pretty interesting. Our people need to hear this one. So listen. Uh, I have a couple quotes. with my, you know, a couple. You know, I, you know, I get a couple of these every year, regardless of which rep warranty I, uh, company I represent. But, you know, I get that complaint call where they're very irate because their central air claim was denied. And uh, I investigate, go to work to see what I can do to find coverage for them. And there's one area where I really cannot help you, and that is dog urine. And it's like acid on the, uh, the, on the whole unit. <laughs> and it sounds like it's funny, but it happens. And the, you as a new home buyer, if you have any pets or dogs especially, you make sure their their leash is, doesn't come too close to that central air unit. Uh, people think you know, it's unreal that could happen, but it happens every AC season wherever I'm at representing. So uh, you know, dog urine is can be a very deadly thing uh, to an AC unit. So keep that in mind. A lot of people don't realize that.
So yeah. don't let your dog piss on the AC. Yeah. What he's saying. <laughs> let me put it in plain language. Don't let the dog piss on the AC. Don't let the dogs out. Yeah, yeah. that's right. <laughs> so I don't go into houses, walk into houses with buyers. I can see the fins on the, the not, these, not a lot, but some of them, the central area units, it, they're gone. It's gone. You know, it's it's like a three or feet, three or oh four goodness. or five inches up off the from the from the rock from it being deteriorating. Yeah. Well, the book answer is regardless of the condition, it is in good it is in good working order and operating and making cold air at time of contract dates uh, is is normally a coverable item. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so I think it depends again, you know, who you're working with too. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. I agree 100. percent right. Guys, so do you have another one, another story, or is that? Oh, I have one. Oh, yeah, years ago, this has been with East. You know, East. It's called East Point now. It used to be called East Detroit. Yeah, I, ha I, had, a, <laughs> I had a house. Still East Detroit. To me. I had a I had a boiler claim, where the contractor went out there and it's like this is my early days in the business. I thought the whole world could come to an end when this happened, but the boiler actually blew up and went through the up the top of the house like a <laughs> missile. Really. It landed in the front. Land in the front in the um, neighbor's front yard, and I was probably only in my mid like late twenties. I when I heard the story, I thought I was. This is not a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you ever see that part of Ghostbusters when the when the guy turns the protection field, the stuff starts flying through the roof? You ever see that? I don't. Know. Uh, so it's like that. A big explosion, crazy stuff. All right. So did you guys cover it? The boiler? Yeah. And yeah, it was it was, it was a coverable claim. It was our contractor that yeah. messed it up at the time. Oh, so messed now, it up. Yeah, we, we messed it up. We, so our our insurance company back this is back when my you know my dad's company. Our insurance company had to rebuild that house. Yeah, really? Okay. okay. So they're they're I'll tell you the roof at least. Oh, man, the geez. contractor's insurance company with us, you know, bit. but that's back in the 80s, so so that goes back quite a bit. But, you know, as you're looking for a home out there, uh, you know, the, the unknown, the possibility of something unexpected is higher than you might think. So regardless of which plan you get, strongly consider a home warranty. It's not only going to provide you peace of mind, but it's going to provide you a sense of financial protection uh, when something goes out because you know all you really have to worry about in most cases is the service fee or deductible paid to the contractor which is normally about a uh, hundred dollars yeah or, I'm yeah, somewhere at 75 yeah, yeah. but yeah so I just, so Mark let me ask you would you be comfortable putting your number out there would that be comfortable for you oh, of course I mean, no problem. so if you have more <laughs> questions about home warranties Mark's number is oh seven three four eight hundred ninety eight sixty five again seven three four area code Eight hundred ninety-eight sixty-five. Yeah, the guy knows home warranties in and out. That's why we asked him to be on the show. I mean, you can just see it from him sitting there. He didn't have to look at a note card or anything. He just <laughs> let it all hang out there yeah. for you. That's the kind of stuff that we love to give you, informative stuff. And watch out for verbiage for stuff that uh, say um, coverage is limited if the system outlived its lifespan. That type of verbiage is out there. Not all of them have that verbiage, but uh, do your due diligence. Read that. Read that contract that, that they're offering you. People. Easiest thing, easier thing to do is call Mark. Yeah, that's, that's true. true. Call Mark, make it easy, all right? <laughs> no. <laughs> so Mark, as a special guest, as an interviewee on the show, and we're also going to have this for a fan of the show, we finally got our t-shirts in. Thank now, you. Let's check this out. Hang on a sec. Let me show the audience. So there they are. Talking real estate. Every guest, okay, and every fan of the show is going to get this. I mean, from here on, we're going to backlog it too, okay? So there you are, sir. Thank you, sir. Absolutely. Talking Perfect. real estate. Perfect. Perfect. Perfect for my stylish figure. Absolutely. That's, that's <laughs> exactly great. perfect. It'd be good for spin class tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. You yeah, guys do spin, believe it. Yeah, All awesome. right, so, so yeah. Dad, let's talk fan of the show. Fan of the show. So I got a fan of the show, and I'm going to tell you, he, he reminded me that he watches every week. When he called me last week, he gave me the special key that, he, that we think fits the Hudson oh, Lock. That was pretty cool. That was yeah, a really so cool thing. If you don't know, a buddy of mine named, uh, I'm going to name him now. Fan of the show. We're gonna, so we'll get the pump up. Ready? ready? <laughs> Steve Kreitz. Steve Kreitz is fan of the show. Let's hear it. Steve, 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 Steve. Steve, 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 Steve. Steve. Put it in the Put comments. In pump it out. Steve, 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 Steve. So I'm going to tell you a story about Steve. Ready? So he called me. He sent me his text. Weird text. Is, How much do you like me? I'm like, ooh. Okay, I like you. Where's this going? Not like that. No, 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 no. I go, I go you're a good friend of mine. I'm pretty, you know, he goes, he goes, I got something for you. I'm like, what do you got? So we're talking back and forth. It takes like well, like twenty four hours. Yeah. So he goes, he goes, look, man. He goes, I got a key. A guy passed away across the way from me that was kind of helping out, and I was going through his, his basement, and he has 
keys and locks that he thinks go, belong to the front door of the jail Hudson building downtown. Yeah. Wow. Because the guy worked there for like 45 years. So I got, because I collect antique keys. So I got a fantastic looking key and a big old lock nah. that we think yeah. was jail Hudson. So Steve Kreitz, you're not only the man, but you are fan, fan of the show. show. Fan of the show, Steve Kreitz. All right. So, shirt's, shirt's coming to you. Shirt's coming your way, my friend. So, And did you know some home warranty companies, including us, covers for rekey? Yeah, very nice. Very there nice. You go. The guy's got knowledge coming out of his ear. He gave me the opportunity. He's got so many home warranty uh, things that they cover. It's amazing. Call Mark. What's your number again? 734-800-9865. There we go. See, we got that. So stories from the road. You any stories? I don't this week. I don't have I got a good. I got a decent one, okay? So here's the key. Whenever we go into a listing down, what's one of the things we say, you know, keep things clean, smelling good. So what's the other word? Starts with a D that we always tell people to do. Declutter. Declutter, right? Declutter. Declutter. So I go into this house with a buyer who went on her contract today, but she, we last weekend, we looked at this house in, where was it at? Dearborn, Dearborn, Dearborn Heights. Big house, right? It looked like 17 families lived there and nobody moved out. Now, there was stuff everywhere, like every kind of thing you ever, every child's. Was it, it a looked path? like path through the house? No, not at all. It looked no. like Walmart. Yeah. It was like every kind of toy, and then every kind of pod, every kind, like you couldn't even walk around the house. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it was like the declutter nightmare. Like you wake up in the middle of the night with the sweats going, declutter on, freaking out. That's what it felt like. Sounds so, like so, <laughs> Right. So, guys, and again, I'm not a, I'm not a pack rat, okay, by any means, but I'm not a neat freak either, but just stuff everywhere. So that is the story. The story from the road is please declutter your house when you go to sell it because I don't want to walk through it crazy. Did, okay? they, did it sell? It did, I don't know. We didn't, we didn't buy it. We didn't buy it. I tell you right now. We didn't okay. buy it. So right. one last thing before we go. Shirts. Impact Outfitters. Bill Polk, thank you so much for making the shirts, sir. It was awesome. We love them. And we got a ton, folks. So every fan of the show, interview, and we might even put on the market to sell. You know what I mean? Because everybody loves... Talking real estate, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Sell them to the pop to our Sell them viewers. to the public. Sell them to the public. We'll Sell see. Them to our viewers. We'll see. We'll All see. All right. Well, that's another topic. For and another protect day. your neighbor. Wear your mask. Yes. That's right. Even though we don't have those on right now. Yes, they're killing me. We have them right here. That's right. All right. So let's call it out. You ready? Yep. I'm Scott. I'm Don. I'm Mark. And we're, we're talking, talking real estate. estate. See ya.